Hello everyone, my name is Inga. I'm a professional home organizer and founder of Home in Balance. I started my business in 2016 and from the beginning, my mission is to simplify the life of anyone who feels overwhelmed by lack of time, excess of items, clutter and disorganization. Um, I help people reduce house at their home, office, and everyday life um, by implementing uh, simple and creative organizing solutions and uh, restoring their space. Uh, today with me is Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Inga. Thank you for having me. Um, welcome. So could you tell us a little bit more about you and your work? Yes, thank you. Hi, everyone. So happy to be here. My name is Gabi Miranda. I'm from Venezuela and I live in Switzerland. Thank you so much, Inga, again, for sharing your time and your space and your energy with me. I'm a manifestation and success coach. I've recently gotten into this world, even though I have been working uh, in online businesses for over 10 years. I just started my personal development brand called joypursuit.com. And it's all about mastering the power of the subconscious mind and the universal energetic laws that rule our world so that you can create a life that gives you joy. And it's not just for you, but for the highest good of all. I'm really driven by the concept of ambition with a conscience. So more than creating a life full of material things that clutter your life and um, give you external validation, but that doesn't really make you happy inside, I'm here to create a world where people find fulfillment from within and uh, of course have everything that gives them joy outside, but don't need all these little things around their home or their spaces to cover up for what's really missing inside. So I'm really excited to be here with you, Inga, and with everyone today. Thank you, Gabi. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited. And um, today's topic, uh, it's uh, quite important, especially considering the um, current situation that we are all in. Because of the virus, the COVID-19, we are all forced to spend 99% of uh, our time at home. Uh, so. Our home is uh, the nearest and the main environment uh, for us. And it's really important to keep it at the um, uh, level that satisfies us. And um, all the confinement and how our home looks like are um, connected with mental health. And now it's really like the best time to take care of it, take care of emotional aspect, how we live and where we live. Uh, so today we will try to answer the question, how organizing can impact our mental health? Yes. So, well, yeah. um, mental health and our physical space are interconnected because our bodies People like to say that we have a mind-body connection, but it's actually a psycho-cybernetic connection, meaning that every single part of your body is the mind. The mind is the body. That's why you can stub your toe on a toy out of place and your mind immediately knows what happens, even though it was the toe that hit that little Lego or stepped on that Lego that was out of place. So the way that our spaces, our physical spaces affect our body are very, very real. And there are also ways that they affect our mind and our emotional states that are also very real. And yes, right now, as we are spending more time at home, we are finding that the space that we spend time in can actually feel confining, but inside. And you'll find that some people are feeling very, very peaceful at home right now. And other people are like, oh my God, I cannot wait for me to get out. I cannot yeah. wait to just go out and be outside of this space. And the reason these two things are happening is not because the spaces are so dramatically different. It's really because that connection between the physical space that they're in affects our mental health. So that when our space is in balance, then we can also be in balance within ourselves. I agree, I agree in 100%. And also like, I know, I read, I heard that uh, clutter problems are 
uh, associated to, with life dissatisfaction increase with the age and especially, uh, and are especially among the women. Um, am I right? Yes, there are many studies that show that there is a connection between this, the level of satisfaction you have in life and how you treat your physical spaces. And we can all probably think of a time in our lives when we were maybe not having the best time in our jobs, or maybe we're not really enjoying the way things were happening uh, in our outside world. And we would come home and just like feel like, Ugh, like I don't want to, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to clean. Like you can m remember that time, maybe you were in college and you had like a pile of laundry uh, on the edge of the bed and you uh, just didn't really want to deal with things. And that's really the bottom line of it. You don't want to deal with certain things that are happening emotionally. So you don't want to deal with the things that are happening in your physical space. And so that level of satisfaction that you have in your, in your holistic life, like your work, your relationships, your relationship with yourself can be mirrored by the space that you spend the most time in, which can be your desk at work. Some people can have a very cluttery, messy desk at work, uh, and also your home space. So this does affect women more uh, disproportionately than men, because we do have a mental load. Women, we have a mental load that's different from men. And I think that all the women here who are either married or in a relationship with the opposite sex and have children can relate to coming home maybe from work before the COVID and okay, you have your grocery bags and then you put it somewhere and then you're like, Oh, um, I also, you see these socks are out of place. And so you put it in the laundry and then like, Oh, okay. Now I, I remember that I forgot to get laundry detergent. And then this list in your mental, your mental list of things to do just keeps growing, right? Like you have to add like the things you need yeah. for the kids homework and you know, the grocery thing. And then the husbands or partners can come home the same space situation, the socks are still out of place, the groceries are standing on the table, uh, they will go straight to the couch, <laughs> turn on the TV, <laughs> and feel perfectly at peace watching their news or whatever it is they're doing, disconnecting from whatever they were doing at work before. Whereas women, uh, as we age, we get more conscious of everything that's happening mm -hmm. with our families, our spaces, our work, and our relationships, and we keep all of that in our head. And so, yes, the level of satisfaction that you have in all those areas is mirrored in your physical space. I totally agree. And I have, uh, unfortunately, the same situation with my husband at home. So his can be like a big disaster around him. And <laughs> who cares? I go there. There's my place. So we love them anyway. But <laughs> as yeah. women, we have to take certain steps, right? to yeah. deal with those situations. Um, so do you talk with your clients? I understand that most of your clients are women, right? Yes, the majority of my and clients So are do women. you talk with your clients about the impact between the messy and clutter home and their mental health? Yes, I do. There is a part of the work that I do because the success and manifestation coaching that I do is based on neuro-linguistic programming. So there's actual neuroscience that goes into the work that I do. I am a certified coach in neuro-linguistic programming, EFT, which is emotional freedom techniques, clinical hypnotherapy, which is a way to talk directly to the subconscious mind, life and success coaching. So that's where the success oh. portion comes from. Yes. Uh, and time techniques, which is uh, something we work so that you can look at your past and feel very at peace with it and look at your future and feel motivated by it. And so when I say that there is a neuroscience component to the coaching that I do, I mean mm -hmm. that there's a very real, very authentic science-based information that proves that our physical spaces affect our body. So as I said before, we're in this uh, psychosomatic, cyber-cybernetic uh, effect. And for example, I brought this today because our physiology, the way we stand up, the way we physically behave and show up in the world affects mm -hmm. our mental state. Very, very, very real. Um, if anyone wants to check out Amy Cuddy's um, TED talk on the superwoman pose. Like if you put your arms on a superwoman pose for 16 to 20 seconds, this actually triggers 
a hormonal reaction in your body that makes you feel more confident. So some doctors actually before they go to surgery will stand in a superhero pose for a few seconds to let that confidence kick in. So yes, the physical space okay. affects you. And so this is a very simple example of how it affects you. When you see a glass and it's like fancy and elegant and prettier, don't you feel a little bit better? Like it's like, ooh, I have something special going on. So yes, I do talk about uh, these things with my clients and I, I encourage them to do small things for themselves that will make them feel better and that will get their mental state to a positive one. So it could be as simple as getting a glass of water, but the elegant kind of a nice glass and adding some fruit to the water and just by doing that very small thing, they already feel uplifted. Like, oh, today's something special. I have something going on. Yeah. <laughs> so but cheers to that. Yeah. So, so it means like you advise your clients to declutter and organize their space as a part of the process to solve some of their problems, like mental problems. Like... Um, the decluttering can be a, might, might be a solution for them. Yes, it's part of the solution. It's not the only one. As we understand, mental issues can sometimes go very deep. And that's where the other modalities come in. But I really like to walk my clients through their ideal day. And I would love to invite everyone watching today to do that exercise today and walk themselves mentally, visualize, hear, feel what their ideal day might look like. And you might notice that when you go into that vision in your head of what that ideal day would look like, maybe you wake up at 7.30 and do some yoga, or maybe uh, you are a person whose ideal day is to wake up at 9 a.m. after sleeping so many hours, and you wake up all relaxed and go to the spa and have a massage. Your ideal day, ideal day could be exclusive to you and completely different. But what you'll notice, and what my clients tend to notice, is that that visualization they have in their head is always clean, organized spaces with a lot of space, light mm -hmm. coming in. You'll notice that the things that you want in your ideal world actually look and feel clean, organized, and beautiful. So one of the first things I invite people to do is to create their new identity from that ideal person they want to be and that ideal life they want to be and start bringing what they can into their present lives, which can be anything from if they want to get this beautiful Tesla car, I'm like, okay, so give your current car some love and clean it up, organize it. You know, are you going to treat your Tesla with like the dirty laundry and the shoes and the kids bag in the back yeah. seat? Or are you going to keep it like super clean and shiny? Yeah. So, so, yes. um, it's, it's really great to hear that you, you're familiar with the home organizing service. For me, it's really like important. And of course, like our um, professions are way different, but it's good that we still have uh, common parts and we can support, uh, support each other and support, uh, support uh, our clients. But the one thing that I noticed um, is like the shame, shame, Hire a professional organizer, and especially here in Switzerland, where people have like a perfect reputation, like they are organized, mm. the houses are big, perfect, clean, and there's nothing to to change. So what so what about this shame? Yes, shame is such an important emotion to deal with. And it's something that is socially brought to us. The expectations that we have to live this perfect life, like you're mentioning, like this perfect house with this perfect uh, home environment and a perfect job, the pressure is so, so high. So mm -hmm. socially, we are told that you should be able to be superwoman and handle absolutely everything with absolutely zero help. And we hear all the time uh, this silly meme on the internet, I see it all the time on Instagram where people go like, you have the same 24 hours that Beyonce does. So mm -hmm. it's trying to shame you into feeling guilty that you don't do more in your 24 hours and you don't have the level of success or money or perfection in your body, for example, as Beyonce does. And let me tell you something, I am going to debunk the myth that you have the same 24 hours as Beyonce because you do not. You do not have 
three nannies going around taking on your children. You do not have several home organizers. You do not have yes. several assistants. You do not have a driver to take you back and forth and take care of the parking of the car for you. So you yes. don't have a personal chef, right? So if you don't have all of these people, this army of helpers around mm. you, and you're doing everything yourself, you do not have the same 24 hours that Beyonce does. And I, I, I do not agree with shaming people into getting help. We are a society. We are supposed to get help. We are supposed to help each other. And we also have this, uh, I'm going to reference a really wonderful book called The Big Leap. And I strongly recommend anyone who can uh, go and read it. And it talks about the four zones that we have. The zone of incompetence, the zone of competence, the zone of excellence, and the zone of genius. So for us right now, doing what we love is our zone of genius, right? You love what you do and you love serving your clients with that work, right? Yeah. And I love coaching women into being the most amazing, badass, successful version of themselves and go out into the world with purpose. That's my zone of genius. My zone of incompetence is everything techie related. It took me so long to try to figure out a headset today, you guys that I ended up using this one because I could not figure it out. I needed some help. Getting help is okay. Your zone of incompetence will cost you time, money, even more money than investing in someone giving you help because just think about the amount of time you could have used on something productive of your zone of genius, that thing that you really love to do and that is, gives you more time and energy and makes you feel like so good that you did it versus that thing that you could spend 48 hours doing and barely advance this much. When you could just hire someone else that could do it for you, and then mm -hmm. in the same amount of time you advance in something else, boom, a bunch. Don't give in to the social shame of hiring a personal organizer or a coach or a therapist or any kind of help that you need, even a nanny, because you are a human being and it's okay to get help. Yeah, so um, I love this example with Beyonce and, and really agree that like, if you can delegate some tasks, do it. Don't hesitate because this way you can save your time and be more productive on things that you will, will really bring you um, where you want to be. Yeah, I call it being the CEO of your life. Think about mm -hmm. it. Does the CEO of a Fortune 500 company around the world spend their time organizing their schedule even? They don't even organize their own schedule. They have someone else do that mm -hmm. for them so that they can focus on the high return activities that help them get their company to where it needs to be. So be the CEO of your life and delegate the things that don't bring you joy, the things that um, you are, it's not your zone of genius. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so maybe let's quickly indicate a few benefits of being organized for our mental health. And for me, like, first and um, most important is like cleaning is dealing with your stress and regulate emotions. And yes, when I feel like angry or depressed or whatever, I look for something that I can clean and also I'm looking for something that I could maybe get rid of, like change to, to clean my space. And, and yes. it helps me to, to feel much better after. Yes, it helps with the, uh, to deal with your emotions. I do want to know that perhaps that won't be the case for a lot of people. Perhaps uh, cleaning and organizing themselves is something that just doesn't make them feel that much better. And then that would be an excellent opportunity to hire someone out to do it for them because then they come home to that space that's mm -hmm. been clean, organized, and, and, and they have like a, a blueprint of how things to keep them running optimally. And then that will give them that sense of peace and calm. I'm the same as you. Whenever I'm having a high stress moment and I look around and then I, I see that I mirror that stress in my space, I'm like, no, no, I cannot produce high energy work in this environment. So, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. a messy mind produces a messy space. So I just go clean it out. 
but and then that works for me but i do know that for example my husband is the complete opposite it doesn't matter to him what's going on around but he does enjoy coming to a clean organized space so we actually do have help we hire help for that so um i just wanted to make that quick quick note there um and yes there are other aspects of uh, your life that get greatly improved and help with your mental health when you are getting more clean and organized and this can be either with a service like with home and balance or it can be when you do it yourself or it can be um, a progressive effort that you do like maybe you pick one area of your home first or one area of your life and so on and one of them is it improves relationships with your partners children and um, people that you share your space with, which maybe you're in a dorm room, maybe you are in an apartment that you share with friends, and then you have that one friend that loves to leave the dirty dishes in the sink and doesn't wash them, and you're like, mm, I love you, but. Yeah. So when you set yourself up for a space where everyone follows the rules of keeping it clean, organized, airy, spacious, it actually improves the relationship because it reduces friction right? You don't have that little, when you come home and you're like, I just cleaned this place. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it like this now? If you all have that communication, it actually improves the relationship. And in couples, oh, this is wonderful for couples. When you can manage to stay after hiring maybe the service, you can stay in that place of keeping it clean and organized. The relationship blossoms. Another one is that it improves sleep. So earlier in the conversation, I mentioned the mental load that is very uh, just typically particular to women more than men is that mental load of that list in your head of all the things that you have to do. You're, like you have to do checklists. Like I have this for work and then I have this for the kids and then I have this for the groceries and da, 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 da. When you find yourself having some issues sleeping, Sometimes at the subconscious level, that's a big part of the work that I do, the subconscious mind. There are a lot of things that you are not aware of because the subconscious mind works with 2.3 million bits of information. And bits of information are like the weight of your chair, of your body on your chair right now. Were you aware of that before I mentioned it? No. <laughs> No, but your subconscious mind was aware of it. So okay. even though you might not be going through that list at bed at night, your subconscious mind is. So getting clean and organized makes that list smaller and allows you to go to bed better. Another one um, is that it reduces anxiety and stress because again, that list of things to do and then coming to a space that is balanced and just organized, it gives you that sense of, ah, <sighs> doesn't it? That moment of, yeah. I don't have more to do. I get to relax at the end of the day because I know that my space is okay. I can focus on something like maybe cooking a delicious meal. It reduces stress and anxiety. Another one is that it sets you up for success. And I love giving people an example. Like remember when you were in school and you had a big, big test in the morning and you planned for it, right? You had your little pencil case with your sharpened pencils or your mechanical pencil and extra uh, carbon and then like your eraser, your pencil sharpener, all this stuff because mm -hmm. you knew you were going to go in there and ace it versus another time that you might have had a presentation or a test and you weren't prepared. You didn't have the pencil at hand. You didn't have the eraser at hand. And then those little things that cost you time, mm -hmm. they actually make you more likely to fail at something because you didn't prepare for it. Yeah, exactly. And um, I always repeat that if your home is in balance, your life is in balance. And it's yep. simple. <laughs> and um, so maybe do you have some tips and tricks uh, how to find a balance between uh, home and mental health? Yes, especially now that we are spending so much time at home. Like, for example, I work from home. So for me, um, it's literally my office is my space. Mm -hmm. um, and then having that break between working hours for those who are still doing home office or for those who are like, well, my job is temporarily on hold. How do I get this balance? I like to have rituals and I use something called anchoring. So for example, every time, every morning when I wake up, I do first the meditation 
And that's a great way to start with your own balance, right? Like first get yourself personally in balance. I like to start my day with a meditation and then I go and make myself tea or just warm water with lime. And then in that moment, I will do a gratitude list in my head. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for, you know, my kitchen. I'm grateful for my clean home. I'm grateful for my dishwasher. So grateful for the dishwasher, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, and then that gives me a really much nicer mood, just starting with gratitude of appreciating my physical space, like mm -hmm. my couch. And I just like, I thank you, refrigerator, for keeping all of our food healthy and just lasting longer. Thank you so much for making my life easier. I thank everything to the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> the fact that I don't have to exactly. sleep is wonderful. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So it's, yes, um, it's really important to be grateful for, uh, for everything which we have. And now we can, in this situation, when we are, we can really appreciate what we have. Yes. So, and a lot of the times when we have a messy home, we don't even know what we have and we're not appreciating it. Right. Like it's of not, course, of course, we're not grateful for what we have accomplished. Like, wow. All this stuff that makes our life comfortable and safe. Yeah. So it's, um, so like, for example, I'm, um, I, I'm not a Feng Shui consultant, but I, I did some courses and I really believe in the power of, of this philosophy, like this, every like mm, the energy is yes. related with a different, um, uh, aspect of your life. And really when I improve my wealthy corner, I, I notice a huge difference in my business and like yeah. all things that you, like the small flower somewhere in your home also can make a big difference not only for your home but also for your life yes and it, you'll notice that i love that you brought up the flowers I, if you guys can see my orchids i love my orchids um having something beautiful in your space can be such a powerful booster for your mental health I love advising people to add a beautiful picture or flower or plant right when they walk through their home, like in the hallway, mm -hmm. put it in a place where the first thing that you see when you come home is not like maybe the shoes. You know how in Switzerland we take off our shoes and it's like all disorganized in front of the door. Yeah. That doesn't really <laughs> make you want to go like, mm. but if you have this beautiful plant there, maybe you put the shoes in a, a rack or something that will give you an entrance to peace and balance. Um, and then I also have other little rituals that I personally do because I'm Latina. So my grandmother did these things uh, when I was growing up and they're part of my energetic. Now that we're talking about feng shui and the energy of the home, I love cleansing energetically. And I have my palo santo, which means mm -hmm. holy, holy stick in Spanish. And my grandmother, um, this is actually an endangered species now, which is so sad. I've had this one stick for like over two years now. So you can use incense or just a essential oil water mm -hmm. spray with boiled water. And that will give you that extra aspect of the physical. Remember when we were talking about how the physical affects the mental? So I'll yeah. just like bless my, my home. And some, this might be a bit woo for people, but I like to do bless my home with love. And then I'll just, oh, this aroma is so, so delicious and beautiful. And I'll just be like... I bless my home with love and I thank it for giving me all we need. Any energy that is ours, I ask that it be blessed and multiplied and any energy that isn't serving us, I ask that it be removed and transmuted into the light and I'll open the windows and let the air circulate. And yeah, it's just something I do, which maybe is uh, fun for some of the people watching. But it's really like um, the smell, it affects your mind because like sometimes when you go to the more luxury shops you can smell the specific like you can have your eyes closed and you know in which shop you are actually because yes. like this specific smell around and it's because after you enter and it's like oh it's really nice here so maybe i will spend more time and more money yes yeah. That is a very powerful marketing strategy and they are actually using that anchoring that I was mentioning before because the the smell triggers a memory and then it becomes locked in your mind with a positive 
sensation. And then you mm-hmm. look for that more as it releases dopamine and serotonin in your body. So yeah, you're talking my stuff. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so maybe like now, do you have some um, uh, videos to recommend or some documentaries or channels where people could find uh, like a support um, or knowledge about, uh, yeah. I, I love that you're asking about that. There is so much time that people have now that you can spend at home. And I feel like there's a temptation to watch a bunch of content on the internet or on Netflix that is not uplifting or helping you in any way. It's just distracting and that's it. And I love the opportunity of sharing some movies or documentaries that might be helpful to people like Minimalism Mm -hmm. on Netflix. Wonderful film. It will make you um, the story of stuff. Don't know if this one's on Netflix or on YouTube, but you can figure out how things actually come to be and how clutter spaces affect your own mind. I love um, the people behind who does, who did my clothes. That's actually a documentary and also a website. So you can look at the, where your things that you own come from. And as I like to believe that there's this energetic connection between what you own and where it came from. Like, do I really want to have these things that mistreat people in the production of making it? Or did I want to own something that mistreated maybe animals in the production of making it? So those are really good documentaries. I think that you had mentioned uh, some other favorites that you had. Uh, So my favorite is the story of of stuff, but also I recently um, watched like the um, short video about the toxic beauty. Because the top oh, yes. beauty is, um, I don't remember, but I, I cannot watch it at the moment, but like only the reviews. And it's, yes. and so for me it was one, enough. Actually on, probably you couldn't watch it because maybe you were looking for it on YouTube or on Netflix. Yeah. And so Toxic Beauty is available on Amazon Prime Video. And yeah, anyone so. can rent it. If you have an Amazon account, you can rent it for like maybe three to five francs. So it's not okay. that, that much. And it's such a wonderful, mind-blowing and life-changing documentary. Um, many of us women, we love makeup. I'm definitely wearing some today. <laughs> and uh, that makeup drawer can be such a mess, right? Like, can I get an amen? <laughs> um, yeah. Toxic Beauty talks about the incredibly large amount of toxic chemicals in the beauty products, cosmetic Mm -hmm. products, and cleaning products that we use every day, and how we are unaware of what we're putting in our bodies and how that's poisoning us and um, our health and the planet. It's it's amazing. I've changed my my entire uh, beauty routine around it. I'm like reading the ingredients a lot more, more aware of what's inside the products because just as I want to keep a clean home, I of course want to have a healthy, holistic life and body. So yes, yeah, love that you brought that one up. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so thank you, Gabby. I think we, we mentioned everything what we wanted. And of course, for you, our watchers, if you have any questions, you can ask, contact us um, directly under this post or on Instagram, Facebook, uh, on our website, and we are happy to help you. So if there is anything that uh, you are struggling, uh, we want to help you. Yes, DMs are open and for a short period of time during COVID-19, Inga and I have partnered. So some of the sessions that I usually offer at 250 francs uh, for 90 minutes are at 97 uh, francs only, only if you come through Inga. So you have to drop (laughs) her name. So you'll get that special uh, little gift. That's something that we prepared just for you. And yes, our DMs are open. Find us on Instagram. Come to visit our websites. We are here. Anything that you want to talk about, about how the home balance and mental balance connect, we are here for you. Thank you so much for your time, your energy. Thank you. Bye.